second episode of Vocal Care for Teachers. My name is Sarah and today I want to break down some of the core myths about things you can do to assist your voice when you are unwell. Look, it happens to all of us, myself included. It gets to that cold time of the year and then before you know it, you get run down and hit with the flu. So what can you do to assist in this, particularly when there are some really big demands on your vocal use and vocal function in the classroom and as a teacher? Well, the very first recommendation is if you are sick and if you're suffering from cold symptoms, including a sore throat, an inflamed throat, or at worst, a chest infection, it's really best to stay at home. Firstly, don't pass it to your colleagues. And secondly, if you're going into the classroom with a flu, your vocal folds are generally inflamed and prolonged speaking and speaking over maximal background noise will only serve to create some vocal damage and exacerbate the sore throat. It can also prolong the amount of time it will take for you to experience vocal recovery. And finally, because the vocal muscle is slightly impaired due to inflammation and swelling. When you do go to use it, you'll find that you are really susceptible to increasing wear, tear, strain, or even picking up very bad vocal habits that can set you in line to develop a voice disorder. So, rule number one, if you're sick, do your voice a favor, and your colleagues too, and stay home. Many of you may experience quite a lot of sensitivity to the throat area and this is quite a common thing that occurs with people who are using their voice a lot. The more we use our voice, the more the muscle gets fatigued and if you're looking at a typical teaching day of about eight hours of vocal use plus getting home and speaking with the family or the puppy or whatever it might be, you will find that the voice will naturally get tired. Now let's talk about how to manage vocal fatigue. The first thing to do is do not whisper. Don't try to use less volume to project your voice when you're speaking if you're feeling tired. The most important thing is that you just try to keep voicing at a normal level. Whispering will actually increase fatigue, so don't do it. It might feel like it's productive, but it's actually not going to be helpful. It's actually worse for the voice if you're feeling tired to then go and whisper. If you're tired, it's also good to consider how much water you're taking in. Vocal fatigue is usually exacerbated by a dehydrated body and as a result, the voice will also dehydrate as well. So ensure that you're getting your daily water needs. That could be in the form of regular cool water. It could also come in the form of herbal teas and things like that. Let's talk about cough syrups. Don't they sound so effective? If you read the box, you know, if only they did what they purport to do. Save yourself the money. There is no evidence for cough syrups alleviating or remediating a cough. So, you know, you could probably better off gargle some salt water. That has just as much evidence. So if you're coughing, what can you do? There is some small level evidence of the benefits of dark chocolate don't encourage me to inhibit coughing. So you might like to have just a small piece of dark chocolate and see if that actually works for you. There is a little evidence for that that's quite recent. I'm now going to show you how to cough, not in the hope that you'll need to cough watching me, but we've got two ways of clearing the airway. The first method is abrasive and it involves high pressure contact of the vocal folds. When we express the air through the lungs, I'll show you what it sounds like, it's our regular cough. <coughs> that sound you hear is the vocal folds contacting very forcefully and violently. The more you do it, the more hoarse the voice will become. There is an alternative. It does have a drying effect in a sense because we're feeling a lot of airflow against the vocal folds, but it avoids the vocal folds beating against each other and this might be a good method for you. Just have a listen. All I'm doing is taking my breath in and then expressing air very strongly and ensuring that my vocal folds don't contact and make that noise. So it looks like this. 
It's a little bit like a wheeze. I'll do it again. <sighs> so that can serve to move a bit of fluid and clear the chest without increasing wear and tear at the vocal level. Avoid menthol-based lozenges. They might feel nice and warm and toasty in the back of your throat. That's the effect of the menthol. But alongside that comes dehydration to the vocal muscle. I've lived all over the world and it's amazing the number of questions I get about what to do to keep the voice healthy. So there's a few little myths out there. One is that if you drink raw egg, it will alleviate any vocal pain you're experiencing. There's no research for that. If it makes you feel good to drink raw egg or go and have an eggnog, I won't hold it against you, but we don't have any scientific evidence as yet to support the intake of raw egg to keep your voice healthy. I personally like to have honey and lemon and a bit of ginger in warm water, more because it feels nice we don't have evidence for that either. So I know we all probably tell our friends have some hot honey and lemon. I used to do that before I studied speech pathology. Look, it feels nice, it tastes nice, but it won't serve with any symptoms of fatigue or you know, a, a cold or a flu in the vocal tract. It will, however, serve to give you more hydration, which never hurts. There are some journal articles that point to the efficacy of eating pineapple or pawpaw because this will induce the release of an enzyme called bromelain which is said to reduce inflammation. I personally will do that. Before an audition I'll usually have a little container of cut up pineapple that I'll, I'll sort of chew on before I enter the room. Watch out it doesn't get stuck in your teeth. I really hope you found this video helpful and that you can start to apply some of these strategies or perhaps eliminate some of the things that can impact on the voice negatively. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe. We've got another five videos coming in the mini series, Vocal Care for Teachers. Finally, if you have any concerns about the durability or reliability of your voice as a teacher, or if you're experiencing any vocal changes, I strongly recommend that you undertake a diagnostic voice assessment with a speech pathologist. I provide that service locally in Melbourne. You're welcome to seek me out if you feel you need some extra support. Looking forward to sharing content with you next Thursday. If you have questions, feel free to ask. I'm always happy to answer and talk about one of my most favourite topics in the world, the voice. And until then, take care, stay healthy and see you next Thursday. Ciao.